Thank for you. me, making trouble was a dream come true. You know, it's uh, I'm proud of this album. This is uh, the first full length album from Houston. Um, it's an album that opened doors for a lot of people. Um, and you mentioned Run DMC. You know, at, at the time, Run DMC was winning. You know, the Run DMC, the Fat Boys, you know, groups like that at the time, LL and them, they were winning at the time. And, I, and the powers that be at rap at the time wanted to emulate that success. And I believe you may have heard semblances of that in the album because they wanted to emulate or mimic that success and, and, and they were in control. And so we, we as the artists, we, we just went with it. And, and, and uh, I'm proud of what we did with the album. I'm proud of Red. Uh, Red is a genius, man. If you've ever been in the room with Red and watched him work, he's a genius. And um, Johnny is one of the most, uh, the best MCs that I've ever met in my life. And I have met a lot of MCs. He's hands down uh, in the top three that I would ever met in my life. Uh, he's a lyrical force. Um, very uh, metaphoric, uh, use a lot of symbolism, uh, tremendous wordplay. Uh, one of my best friends is just, it's, it's just, it's, it's an honor to be here 30 years later thinking about that the Ghetto Boy legacy continues to live on. Yeah, and, and the way you guys fed off of each other too was real dope. I mean, you guys had that chemistry. Matter of fact, I think this is Prince Johnny C right here. Is that you, Prince Johnny C? Ready, red. Yo, 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 this is Johnny C. Welcome what's to the up, show, man. man. It's an honor. Hey, you know, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, what's up, time, everybody? How y'all doing? The first time in 30 years where everybody has been together right at this time. That's great. Oh, wow. You got yeah, that on this show, Hey, listen. Man. Wow, and man. It feels good to be on the, on the phone with you, Johnny C. Hey, hey, what's y'all. What's going on, on man? Hey, Box, man. I was trying to hold myself together listening to you, brother. That's an honor, man. Same respect from this side. What's up, Ready Red? Everybody know Red I'm is that genius, I'm like, man. I'm, I'm, yeah, thank you. I mean, you know that. Yeah, it's, see, first it's, of all, let me tell amen. you, something. we became we became brothers. We became brothers yes, during our time as ghetto boys. You know what I'm saying? Because at this time, well, nothing going on. We had to make it work. We had to get in there and shovel and dig the foundation and make it strong mm-hmm. and square the edges. Won't, won't nothing happen in the ghetto? Who? Who are y'all? And you know what? Let me, I, you, you know, know what, what I want to say though. You know what I want to say that seldom heard, man. Um, uh, the brother jukebox, man. I'm, I'm going back on what you were speaking earlier, man. When I came to Houston, man, you know, <laughs> I've been doing this thing since '79, so I got him with a few years, you know. But when I came to Houston, and box started handing me some sheets, I'm, you know, and I was like, man, I don't rap other people's shit, man. But the things that him and Raheem was writing was so so magnificent, man. Big respects. I, t- I always told Bob, he was a ju- he was a beatbox. I was like, a beatbox? The way this cat right rounds, man, I knew that wouldn't last for long, man, because Box is just magnificent as well. Him and Raheem, man, it was an honor, man. I'm telling you. I mean, I mean Box is one of the most fabulous cats I ever heard. Rock the mic as well. Believe that. The world may not know that, but Box is that dude. All right, let's you know, get it's, back to it. You know, it's really, uh, man, it's just um, to hear you guys, to hear you, Johnny, Knowing the type of lyricist that you are, speak about me in that way, it brings tears Come to on, my man. eyes. Because I know that, because I know that shit is real. You hear me? I know that's mm-hmm. genuine. You know I, know I, ain't got no, got, I know. I know you ain't got no you know lies in you. Around. You feel me? There you exactly. Go. You ain't got. You ain't. You, you yes, ain't gonna tell nobody this. You is this when it's that. And so I, I really and you know appreciate what? I, that, bro. You know what? I used to tell. And you know what? I want to say. I used to tell Bill. I said, Bill, man, because Bill, Bill is like a. Bill, man, he can bring peace to any storm, man. I mean, he knew the words. Bill could, Bill could speak you up into something, man. He was fabulous, the way he moved people, man. That's why Bill is so lovable today. And I knew, I used to tell him Bill would be a great-ass rapper. I knew that. I knew Bill would be something nice, too, as well, once he started right. putting pin down on some shit. You know, because the, the way his mind worked, the things he talk about, you know what I mean? He, he Bill could move you on some shit. Right. Real. But yeah, but word up, it was a pleasure, man. It was great, man, working together as ghetto boys up in that up in that lot, man. That's y'all know that's one of the best times in my life, man, that time period. Through all the hardship and all of that shit, man, it was still the greatest time, one of the greatest times of my life, man. You know, me and Red, we go way back to Jersey, the Mighty MCs, you know. Even in the Hustlers crew, when I was in the Hustlers crew, man, 
I started in 79, man. And then and one day, it was me and a cat named Raheem Lamar that was in the Hustlers crew with me. We went up to the skate ring when Red started spinning up there at the Capitol, and he let us get on the mic. Get on the mic. That was my first time meeting Red, you know. And and we rocked the house, man. Ready, Red, spent force, man. It was something great, man, for real. I'll never forget it. But um, uh, ever since then, man, I knew Red was that dude. I knew Red was that dude the way he, he'll, he'll put a record on. he hear you spit for for one bar. He know what goes with it. That shit was amazing, man. And, and, and ever since then, we worked great together, you know. But anyway, it feels good to talk to y'all, man. We on the show, though, so we're going to bring the attention back to these boys, man. How y'all feel? I'm glad to be on the Murder Master Music Mix. Now, hey, music show, it's a wonderful thing. And I feel honored, man, that you guys contacted me and hit me up, man. It's been a long time since I've spoken to the people about this shit. But, uh, hey, I'm ready. It's fire. Let's get it. Man, definitely, definitely, man. It's, it's a huge honor. And, and this album, Making Trouble, you know what I'm saying, when you guys uh you know, right, right be, I'll start with you, Sergio Blocks, because right before uh, you guys uh, uh, made this album, there was another lineup with you, Raheem, and uh, uh, K-9, I believe. Uh, at what point did uh, Johnny C and Red uh, come into the mix? Red, Red, when um, um, K-9 had some personal issues that he had to overcome, and uh, I pray that he overcame them. Uh, Johnny C, I mean, uh, Raheem wanted to go solo And they saw his potential as a solo artist And uh, so he went solo But I, I was, I always wanted to keep the Ghetto Boy legacy alive So when when Raheem was doing what he was doing And, and, and uh, K-9 was going what he was going through You know, I was still frequenting all the spots Where all the MCs hung out And we were looking for people And we just happened up on Red in the Rhinestone Wrangler one night at a DJ contest. We didn't know he was going to be there. We out, out, My DJ at the time was DJ Easy C. He was with the Del Four. He came from the Del Four. But he didn't want to be the ghetto boy full-time DJ. He didn't want to do it full-time because he already had his crew. You know what I'm saying? The, the Del Four. But uh, we happened up on Red, and me and E.N.T. Trahan, we heard Red, and we didn't let Red get away. Red wasn't supposed to be in Texas for 20 or 30 years, but we wasn't letting him go anywhere. <laughs> And uh, 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 I'm on the phone. Um, I'm 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 trying to remember where I was. My daughter said something to me. I'm sorry, but uh, we we wasn't let we we wasn't we wasn't gonna let Red get away. And Red can better better tell you how how uh Johnny came about. He he can tell because he initiated that. You know, we was looking for somebody, and Red mentioned, "Hey, I know somebody who can who will fit." great in here who's a good MC and, and this is how Johnny came into the picture. Red, you, you and Johnny might want to interject here and let them know how that came about. Mm. All right. Um, okay, so it's me, Box, Raheem, K-9. We are practicing up at the 1225 North Shepherd car lot. And um, mm. one day Raheem <laughs> said he was going to go do his thing. K-9 went on vacation. And it's just me and Box. I say, wow, mm-hmm. Box. So Jay say, man, I'm going to find some people, man. And uh, I said, hold on, Jay. I went in my tape bag, and I pulled out a demo of the Prince Johnny C. This is how I rock. Solo rock. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. A couple of other joints. And then uh, Jay say, shit. We're going to have to sell for that, man. So I called Johnny C. I said, Johnny C, man. I need you, brother. Come on down to Houston. Mm-hmm. And they say, I know what, a day or two, John? You was on your way. Mm-hmm. That's that's basically he it. He was on his way, you and know. That's the short story. Yeah, that's, that's the short, short story. story. Yeah, that's the short story. That's basically We're going to say all the down, good man. stuff. Well, you know what, Press? On the exclusive right there, if I can, John, if I'm not uh, going too deep, uh, Johnny C was expecting his first his first child at that mm-hmm. time. And, no, um, my second child. That was my second second, second child. child. Yeah. Okay, go, second. go ahead, Red. And um, mm-hmm. and our mentor Jasper Bradley, he had called me. He said, "Man, you gotta look out for Johnny C, bro." And I was like, "What's going on?" So he was telling me. I said, "Well, you know what? I'm in a pretty good mix right now." So that's how I got to get in Jay's ear, call Johnny C, get my MC that I had what since eighty one, eighty two, John, when we was practicing Mighty MCs. We was blowing Absolutely. everybody out in Trenton, New Jersey as the mighty MCs. Uh, right. 
one night you guys are at the War Memorial camp. Building, we busted 29 crews with 29 DJs. 29 but DJs. Absolutely. Mighty MC. Okay. Johnny C got the plaque. <laughs> Fact. You know what I'm saying? I Jackie, she got it. the plaque, yes, but sir. we dusted. You know, every what? I, I kept everything. I still, listen, I, yo, you know what it is? I keep everything, man. I still got the studio for forty. You, got the you know, Jackie, and got just the listen, listen, listen. I'm yeah. gonna let the brothers know. I still got the machine that did the Make a Trouble album, man. <laughs> wow. You hear me, oh, Red? Yeah. yeah, yeah. The yes, studio for forty. I couldn't get the hang of keep that machine. Keep this thing down. dusted off, man. I was gonna take a back. I just think, look. When we was in Houston, uh, Scarface said, "Yo, Johnny, see you still got that forty-four, that four forty? He asked me that two weeks ago. What two weeks ago? I said, uh, mm-hmm. "Yeah, I still got it. I'll sell it to you for a good twenty, thirty grand." <laughs> this, yeah. thing Eddie, this thing is magnificent. This thing is magnificent, man. A lot of things. When Heavy D, for real, rest in peace, came down. Heavy D and the boys came down, and played the uh, Rhinestone Wrangler on forty mm-hmm. off of forty-five. Uh, Eddie F had one. I said, Eddie F, what is that? He said, Oh yeah, Red, that's the Studio 440. And in about a week later, <laughs> we had one. Uh, Absolutely. But I didn't know how to program it yet, so I manually had to play that joint. But uh, that's mm-hmm. how we came together. And what I loved about it is Jukebox and Johnny C clicked from day one. Show sure enough. See, mm-hmm. Most crews, most crews, you try to put them together, it's like apples and oranges. It, it, it just don't mix. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But Johnny C and Jukebox had a chemistry, which was good. Mm-hmm. You know, it fit right on in. You know what I'm saying? And, um, man, it was magic to see them perform and together and to see everything uh, come together and to go through some of the things that we went through as unknown. You know, it's, it's just that I, I'm, you know. I, I'm from Texas. I had never, at that time, I don't believe I had ever been out of Texas at that time. And so all of my mm-hmm. exposure to all of my exposure to hip hop was over the radio or going to high school talent shows or in these clubs. And when Johnny came, it was like my real first hand experience with an MC outside of my element. And he was dynamic. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Just his, his his persona, the way he carried Wonderful. himself, the way he the way he respected the craft, the way he, he the way he honored yes. the craft, the way he put them words together. It, it was just phenomenal. Well, I was amazed by it. Really? It, 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 was, it was a pleasure you know what I to me. To tell you that it's a lifestyle. It's a culture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a yeah. readiness. It's a martial art. You have to be ready for this. Remember I used to say, it's a box. You go places, people going to want to battle you. People going to want to test you. People going to see what's I, happening. I would, you know what I'm saying? I won't never turn yeah, it down, no battle. Well, when, whatever they brother, want it. And, and you know what? However they That's want right. it. Right. <laughs> You Come picked on. up, you picked up, but you picked up the baton and you ran with it. I'm so proud of you, man. I'm proud to have been on stage with yes. you. I'm proud to made my first album with you. I'm proud Come to have break bread with you. You know what I'm saying? Because nah, we nah, nah. What, what a lot of people need to know. What a lot of people need to know about you is brother. what a lot of people know about you. And this is not uh, to take anything from DJ Screw or no other uh, producer from the south. Radio Red, you the godfather of that sound, that funky, southern, rap a lot, grinding, hip hop sound. You, you Come initiated on. that thing. You initiated that thing. People mm. need to know that. Amen. People need people need to hear that yes, on do. this show tonight. People need to know that 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 we we didn't have anything. We didn't have a producer. We had a DJ in Easy C, but we didn't have a producer. Somebody who could who could who had them. Uh, Beats and breaks records. Who could who could mix them samples and, and and together like you did? Who had an ear for the sound? We didn't have that until you showed up. We didn't have that. We was lost. We we went from wow. we went from car freaks. We went from car freaks. Car freaks. And what you used to call it, red cornflakes. Cornflakes. We went <laughs> we went from that. We went from that yeah. to sampling yeah. to sampling uh the Steve Miller band to sampling uh Peter Frampton. To, to sample yeah. all these other people because of Ready Red. Because mm. of Ready Red. You did Elvis that, Red. I, I just mean, was doing what that. I was doing. No one sampled that. Uh, Elvis Presley. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no Elvis Presley. Tony Montana. I mean, exactly. You know what? See, during that time, uh, we had Dow Oliver, and Dow Oliver was saying that there was a chance to uh, get on the Fat Boy tour. And Harry O, Jay, and, and him worked it all out when we got on the Fat Boy tour, so we needed a a likable record, so came up with mm-hmm. you ain't nothing. Mm-hmm. 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 
and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Because the, the, the fat boys were going. Oh, we read, we did that. We did that song. With, uh, yeah, man, that was perfect. Yeah. They was going good with the uh, uh, breakout uh, wipe uh, with with wipeout. You know, they were yeah. doing uh, beat boy tunes, and like Box was saying, during that time, the powers that be, DC Boys, Run DMC, they wanted a little bit of everybody because we were going to be a commercial viable group at that time. And that's what Jay mm-hmm. Prince wanted. Nothing got pressed, nothing got released unless Jay gave the okay. All mm-hmm. right, so whatever you heard or whatever he's saying now is totally, come on. We ain't put that yeah, we didn't, out ourselves. Now. We, we, didn't, let's, we didn't do nothing without, everything had to be, Jay had the final word on everything. But you everything. know what? What I want to say, he had the money. Hey, but you, you'll probably read. But you know what I want to say, man. I, I didn't give a damn. That shit was fresh. <laughs> yeah, it was. I listen, mean, you know well, what? Listen, when we just we did listen, we first we was in our room. room. Do it. Listen, man. Yeah. When we were in our uh-huh. rooms writing that shit, man. That man, I don't give a damn. The shit was fresh, man. You know. Oh yeah. But we were all around. We were all around creative, man. We can drop any around to anything, man. We can make anything magical and beautiful, man. That's all that I know. And I know whatever you put out, I ain't give a damn. It, I, whatever you get in, like, put out, thank man. Thank you, brother. I, it was nice. It was good for me, man, because I knew we were talented and we were we were on the top with the, with the rest of them cats and to keep. We were ready to go. We were ready to go at any of them cats at any time. Every level. So really, every level. We were I, ready I, to I ain't even on. mad at that, man. Shit, making me trouble neither. was me shit. It was making trouble with this so shit. Was. And I still spin it back, and I still spin it back, man. You know, right. I was listening 30, to I told Box, 30 years I was listening, later. I told Box I a, couple, a couple of months ago. Hold it, a couple of months ago, I was checking. I was spending uh, Ghetto Boys will rock you, man. That thing just had me getting down, man. 